Hi, this is Ofori, the digital reader. And, you know, with all this stuff going on about Amazon, um, I started to think maybe I should take some, take a look at some alternatives to Audible. Kind of really was the rethinking that. So that's what I did. I did take a look at a couple, couple um, audio book stores that were alternatives to Audible. And some of them were pretty good. And I'll probably be doing a video about some of the ones that I liked. But the big deal breaker for me, and I just want to also stop and say, I consider myself a consumer, which means if I like something, I'll pay for it. If I don't like something, I won't pay for it. So for me, Amazon is a bunch of different services, and there are some I love and use. I love Amazon Prime. I love their website search function for pretty much everything on the planet, including books. But there's stuff I don't use. I don't use their shopping service. Can't be bothered with that those that overpriced hippie stuff. And I'm not gonna be buying ebooks from them. But I mix and match what I use based off of as a consumer, what has value for me and what doesn't. So after I looked at some of these other audiobook stores, the biggest issue that popped up for me personally is when I listen to audiobooks, I don't generally listen to audiobooks that are books I want to read physically but just don't have the time or I want my hands free or something like that. When I listen to audiobooks, I'm looking for stuff that's going to be entertaining that I can listen to and do other stuff. So I'm looking for stuff that's going to have great voice actors. Uh, I love um, radio programs, old radio programs. I love full cast adaptations of books. Those are things I really, really love. And I found in these other sites, they definitely had a decent amount of books. They definitely had, you know, narrators, but they didn't have any radio shows, which is bread and butter for me. If you look at my top five um, Audible books, you can see that I think three of them are, uh, I think there's a full cast narration and two that were um, radio shows that were adaptations of books I loved. So for me, those two were ones that although I might play with and I like, they just couldn't be Audible. And to be honest, I couldn't find anything that could beat Audible as far as the full range of what Audible gives. So once I realized, okay, Audible works for me, I'm sticking with it. I'm not even mad at them that I only license the books because it's a service. It's not like, you know, it's, I don't know why, and I wish I could explain it, but I just wasn't as mad about them licensing the audiobooks as I was about them licensing the ebooks. But saying that, I still did kind of wish there was some way I could back it up. Even if I backed it up with the DRM, I just felt like I'd like to back it up just because I'd feel a little bit better. So I started searching around the internet, started looking if it's even possible. I know I thought about this a couple years ago and I they were talking about writing scripts and stuff I can't be bothered with. I love tech. Um, you know, I, I do my due diligence when trying to learn how to use tech, but most of the time I figure out how to do stuff by going on YouTube and watching videos of people who have forged the path ahead of me. Not, I don't have these eureka moments where I'm inventing stuff. So I actually did find a, a video that told you how to back up your audible audiobooks and also ding ding, it takes the DRM out of the Audible audiobook, so you can use them with any player that can play audiobook format, which is M43, I believe, or MB4. I'll, you know, I'll put up in, um, I'll write a text to say exactly what it is. But anyway, the, the generic audiobook format. And so what this video really is to show you what I did and how I got it up and running. It is actually much simpler than take than it was taking the DRM out of um, Amazon and Adobe Digital Editions books. It literally 
except for having to download all of the books. It maybe takes five minutes, if that. I'm going to include the links of the video I watched that told me how to do it, because that's really probably the expert. I'm just a guy showing you how I did what he said to do, um, because he was a lot more technical, and he was talking about other programs, and he was talking about a whole bunch of stuff. I was just like, I'm going to download the app and see what happens. So I downloaded the app. Everything worked fine. And then I uninstalled it, and I downloaded it again to do a video, but they have an option to do a guided tour, and the guided tour kind of takes control of the app. And so I was just like, this isn't a great video. People are going to be like, why is it doing stuff on its own? So I uninstalled it again, added it a third time. And once again, all three times it worked fine, added it a third time, and then I did the video that you're about to see. So enjoy. I'm going to kind of go with an official disclaimer here and that what I'm showing you is if you have purchased your book, an, an ebook, and you want to take out the DRM so that you can store it, archive it, or move it to another e-reader that you own. This should not be for sharing. You really, to be honest, should never share ebooks. If somebody is interested in an ebook you read, then you should either direct them to an ebook store where they can read a sample or tell them to install Libby and get in line to wait for the book that way if they're totally against paying. Or add the book to their wish list and wait for a sale. Okay, so uh, we're going to get started. The first thing I should note is this is a open source GitHub site. So you might, when you're searching for this site in your website browser, get a message that the connection is not secure and you can just you know fix that so you can get to this website also when you're installing it on your computer especially a Mac um, then Mac probably won't install it because it can't verify it can't check the app for viruses everybody do their own thing I've had no problems with it but what you'll have to do if you're on a Mac is you'll have to go to the um, security settings not that. You have to go to the system settings and then go to privacy and security and then you'll just have to tell it to go ahead and install the app anyway. Other than those two things you'll see this is pretty straightforward. I'm not doing anything super techy to be honest. I didn't touch any of these settings. I just kept hitting OK but you'll see what I mean. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my YouTube and the reason I'm doing that is because he has the link to the site and that is Libation. Libation is the app that you're going to use. So I'll click that. It takes me to Libation. I'm going to go to download. It has a whole bunch of different download types depending on your computer. Just as an FYI, I'm using a, um, a M1 Mac Mini. If you're using any of the M1 Macs, then what you're going to choose is you're going to choose ARM64 TGZ. So I'm going to go ahead and install. I mean, I'm going to download it. And now that it's downloaded, I'm going to go to my computer and you can see it right here. I'm going to um, open that and then I see you have the Libation app and I'm going to go ahead and use the app. This is an app that it doesn't install. This is the app right here. So you can drag it into your applications if you want to put it in your applications folder, which is uh, what I'm going to do after I show you how to do this. But as a matter of fact, I'll do it now. I'm going to drag it into my applications. There we go. It's in my applications. And I'm going to double click on it. And you 
can see that it's trying. Apple could not verify libation. Libation is free of Apple could not verify libation is free of malware that may harm your Mac or compromise your privacy. So if you get this message on a Mac, and I did get this message the first time I did it, you can hit the question mark and it tells you about the malicious software and it tells you what to do open privacy and security settings like I mentioned go down to my privacy and security settings and libation was blocked to protect your Mac I'm opening it anyway open anyway I'm putting in my code and there you go I'm a returning user but I'm going as new user so you can see everything would you like a guided tour to get started you do not want a guided tour because we're not making decisions about anything we're really just clicking okay 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 all the default settings are going to work perfectly for 99 percent of people if you want to more get in get more into the weeds god bless you but i didn't even want to mess with it i just basically went with the default settings to see what happened and the default settings were perfect so you're going to choose no and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the settings up here and you're going to go to add an account to load your audible library come back here to the import menu after adding your account I'm going to put in my um, Amazon email I'm going to go ahead and save that. Oh, duh. Once you put in your email, you have to put your locale. My locale is the US. Now I'm going to put in my password. It's scanning now. So now it's pulled all the books from my Audible account. And these um, stoplights basically red means that it does not have the file stored on your computer and you'll see that green will mean it does and after it does a download if it's sometimes it'll be red and it'll give you a specific message if it had a problem downloading a file so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to liberate and begin booking PDF backups. If there's a PDF that is attached to an Audible book, it will also download the PDF. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. So down here you can see it's slowly downloading all my stuff and I'm gonna get a percentage bar. So I'm gonna do a time jump and I will get back to you all once it's completely done. All right, it's almost finished. You can see I got a whole bunch of stats down here. And it's going to only have a couple more left to go. So now it's finished. So now when you look at it, you can see the green ones. There are a couple that are red. And these ones didn't get downloaded. And what I realized after a while is that I have a ton, I had a, well, not a ton, but I had a bunch of ebooks that I read. And after I read them, there must have been some copyright thing or some licensing thing. But basically, Audible took them out of my account. And so it can't get them, but I still have a listing that I read the book. So that's why I can't get them. But that's, out of 176, I was able to get 173. And those three 
I don't even think I can get on Audible anymore. I have to ch double check on that. But you can see green lights has all the information. And the green light means that it's on my computer. So that's pretty good. So now the next question I guess you want to know is where on your computer is it? And to know where on your computer it is, you would go to settings. And books location. That's where my books are on my computer. Once again, you don't have to, it, it all, the defaults work perfectly for me, so I wouldn't recommend you mess with the defaults. So now I'm going to go there and take a look at these things. So I'm going to go to my computer and go where it told me to go. And you can see libation here, that's the name and books and it has all my books and when I look at a folder it has an M4B file and the M4B file is basically like mp3s but for audiobooks so now any player any audio player that can play M4B files can now play this file and for me, I'm really just using it to back up. I'm still going to be using Audible, but just for giggles, I just kind of want to show you how, uni how universal this file is. If you're a Mac user, you can actually go into iBooks You can open the book the book app on Apple and then go to my books and you can just take this file and drag it over there it is and just to test and make sure everything's copacetic this is audible and it's got all your chapters here and it's ready to go so that's pretty much it you know as you add more audiobooks you can open libation up again and for example if I open up libation again I know all it'll it'll basically search my library and I know that the ones that are read I haven't added yet and these three I can't add but th that doesn't really I mean, these four I can't add. Um, I'm assuming there might be some way that I can tag it or mark it, but I'm not worrying about it in that big a way yet. So this hopefully will show you you can do it. Y'all will play around with it. If it has a PDF attached, you can see it has it shows the PDF attached. And hopefully, as always, this information is useful to you. I will definitely include the link. I will include the video that um, told me that I could do this. Dylan the Techno Giz Guy. I'll include the link to this video so you can look at it. This is where I got all this information from. And I guess that's it. Um, this is Ofori, the digital reader. And keep reading.